Hello everyone, it's when it's Wednesday. It's Wednesday. We're here doing some video games live online. Just I don't know, just hanging out. Uh, there's some stuff that came out, but none of it none of it is like uh uh like a vital none of it is like, oh my god, we've gotta get into this. Uh there's a handful of things out. Um that I thought I would uh, spend a little bit of time with here, some of which we talked about on the podcast yesterday, some of which we didn't. Um, and uh, I don't know, we'll kind of see where the, the day takes us here. Kind of, you know, add a little bit of a uh, whim here. Maybe I'll just play three hours of Ghost Recon Breakpoint. Maybe that's the actual answer. <laughs> um, no, I, the, U Ubisoft put out X Defiant finally. And... Um, yeah, that's available now. You could go, you could totally go uh, download that. It's it's on consoles. It's on a personal computer via the UPlay connect uh, U the Ubisoft application, um, and uh, it exists. I don't I don't know that that's uh, that sounds negative. It's it's it, you know, um. It's a shooter. <laughs> I don't. That's not helping. Um, well, maybe we'll just stare at this the whole time. I just prestiged, or I just reinforced, which resets everything here in a uh, unnamed space idol. <clears throat> and so uh, we're already back up to sector forty-three, which is uh, you know pretty. I, I have not had to prestige yet, and we're already up to sector forty-three. Which tell, should tell you something about how powerful I am. I don't know. Um, uh, this is, I, I guess this is a, a pretty late game, unnamed space idol. Um, because I have reinforced my way all the way to fleet, le fleet power level 1085. You, you know, you know. Everyone knows. Yeah, I mean, yeah, right? You're like, oh my god, fleet power 1085. I'm not even fleet power 9 yet. Um, this game's all right. I don't know. It's, uh, um, we got blown up or we got knocked back, I guess. You don't really, you don't really blow up per se, but you do get knocked back. Maybe that's a mean, means this is the right time to actually prestige for real. Um, I just have this on, this is not... When you lay out your bases, you want to do some. I don't know if this is the ideal way to lay out some of these bases, but this is how I've chosen to do it to get the resources I need to succeed. Um, let's, uh, okay, let's actually prestige. Do we need to do anything else? No, I think we just want to uh, start at sector 26. Uh, our ship's looking how we want it to look, and we'll blow it up. And restart it. And, uh... That means that we cashed in the base progress that we had, so... That means our compute speed is now much higher. We've got 5.2 E16 bonus to damage and shields. That's a big, that's a big number. All of these numbers are big, uh, and, and the end result of them is oftentimes uh, somewhat underwhelming. <laughs> when you're like, oh man, that number got huge, I bet I could go from sector 90 to 97. It's like, no, dude, this is, these are some of the last sectors. It's, it's going to be slow going from here on out, but I don't know. Um, you see our research, our sector density looking good making all this stuff happen. I don't know. I, I haven't played this game much uh, lately, but uh, but I'm pretty far along in it because I cheated a bunch, uh, to be totally honest with you. Uh, I have more synth points than anyone should ever have. I, uh, I've already purchased all, all the warp upgrades. It's sweet. Cheating in idle games uh, is, uh, is a fun, it's a fun pastime of mine. I enjoy doing it. It's uh, it feels like you're subverting a thing where they're like, "This is gonna be a thing that's gonna take weeks and months to build up to this thing." And I'm like, "How about what if it took an hour? What if it took like an hour, and then I could move on to the next one of these?" 
and break that one too. Love to break them. Let's uh, close cheat engine here now that we're done with that and uh, take a look at X Defiant. It's a free to play game. We're going to play it here on the personal computer. Um, it's had a message in their launcher since the game came out yesterday that says our services are experiencing limited functionality, which I suppose means that, uh, there's something, <laughs> there's some sort of, some sort of issue with it. Uh, I have not had, uh, any problems launching it or finding games or anything like that. I've seen some people say that it's, uh, you know, that, that matchmaking has been weird, but I, I don't know. I've, I have not, that has not been my experience with it in the, let's call it three matches I've played. You may remember that I streamed a bit of this during the beta. It is, um, it is Ubisoft's attempt to make a call of duty esque first person shooter using uh, characters and concepts from across the world of Ubisoft games, such as Far Cry and Watch Dogs and uh, Tomothy Clancy. Cl the Clance Dog. And so they they split the difference here between like and, and so it, it it is sort of a um it feels like a throwback to the dark days of Call of Duty. It feels like that that uh, the people making this game and in fact I I believe some of the leadership on this team is in fact literally part of it but but it it feels like a throwback to the um to the like hero shooter days of Call of Duty when they were like, well, what if you were a character and you had an ult and you had all this other, you know, um, this, why is this not coming in? Let's see. There we go. Um, let's turn off HDR as well while we're here. And, um, now that it's out and it's free to play, you can see that they've got a store full of skins. For guns, skins for characters. In fact, uh, so the, this, the way that they've done this faction-based thing is there, there are three characters per faction right now, but you don't have the other two unlocked unless you go buy skins. Um, and so they've, yeah, what do they got? They got the, they got the, the garbage men fire, uh, the flamethrower guys from the division, which sure, I guess, um, They've got uh, Phantoms from Ghost Recon Phantoms. Is that a game? Is, Go is, Go is Ghost Recon Phantoms a, a, a video game? Yet? Or is it an upcoming? I, I literally... I know there's Future Soldier. I know there's... Uh, there's Well, you're playing as Future Soldiers from... Fan I don't know. Uh, but you, the, the rebels from Far Cry Six. Uh, some super spies from Splinter Cell. I think there's something like off book. There's something weirdly um, off brand about them referring to like Splinter Cell characters as super spies. It's so it just it makes it seem like a game for children. Uh, and the cyber attackers of dead sec from watchdogs too. And they're locked because, well, you can pay money to unlock them immediately, or I guess, uh, you can grind them out by getting 700,000 XP. They say they've got four factions planned for the, the next year. Um, So I don't, I don't know. I assume it's just other Clancy people. 
and like Rayman. I don't know. Uh, it's got a battle pass. It's you know, there it's it's a, it's a free to play take on this. So they've they've made sure that it is as juiced up as they can uh, get it when it comes to putting putting that sort of stuff in it. Um, they're in their preseason window here, so uh, ranked is not really a thing just yet, but. Uh, and these are their modes. These five modes here. This one is you escorting a payload. Uh, this one is there are five zones and there's an attacking team and a defending team. And one team is trying to capture the zones and one team is trying to stop that. Domination is the same as it was in Call of Duty. It's domination. Occupy is like hard point in Call of Duty where there's a single zone that moves around. And then hot shot is sort of like um is sort of like kill confirmed in Call of Duty where there are icons that drop out of enemies when they die. The catch is that when you get a bunch of them you might become a VIP like figure on your team and then the opposing team will get a bonus if they kill you. This is the mode that is as close as is closest to team deathmatch. I imagine that they have some philosophical um road like like you know block in their brains about team deathmatch and they're just like no every game does that we're not gonna do it um which is like uh, you know and and i'll say like you know when you're going to call of duty review events and going to like you know and and hearing the call of duty developers talk about call of duty year in year out you really do hear them spend a lot of time talking about all the new objective modes they came up with that you look at and go like, this sounds neat. No one's ever going to play it. <laughs> so, um, so on one hand, I understand why they might be a little stubborn about the idea of team deathmatch. Um, but I, I know that I am going to play a lot less of this because it doesn't have team deathmatch. Uh, just straight up. I don't want to play. Okay. Of the five modes, uh, I never want to play Escort ever again. If I wanted to Escort a payload, I would have fucking continued to play fucking Overwatch. You know? If I wanted to play Overwatch, I would play Overwatch. Uh, this zone control mode is fine, but it takes fucking forever. So does Escort because you play both sides of the ball. You know, you, you attack and then you do a round defending or vice versa. Zone control is the same way. Uh, so, like... Call of Duty has gone back and forth on that too in terms of like how long do they want their rounds to be it's like okay changing sides and then I think they realize like oh that sucks like that makes these matches take forever and a bunch of people quit so let's iron that out um this game has not ironed that out and so it, it feels like yeah in, in some ways it feels like a throwback but I would argue that it's a throwback to the era of Call of Duty that that everyone was saying, man, Call of Duty's fucking done, huh? By having set characters with, you know, you can you can change the loadout, but they have an, a, a set ult per faction. You can equip different uh, abilities on them as well, but they are faction specific abilities. And so they've kind of made, they've kind of like sort of made a hero shooter. Um, with no heroes. They've made a hero shooter with a bunch of generic dudes. Like you're not playing as Voss from the Far Cry everyone remembers. You're playing as like, ah, it's Libertad, you know, the rebels from the most recent Far Cry, the rebels, the rebels? Like, oh yeah, okay, yeah, the, all right, yeah. Much like Call of Duty, they've got uh, battle pass and weapon XP boosters that you can activate. It seems that you unlock weapons by completing challenges with other weapons. Yeah, you say this game reminds me of Black Ops 4. Yeah, yes, this, this game definitely reminds me of, like, that's the era I'm talking about, is kind of that Black Ops 4 and three era.
and um, those games were not great. Hot shot. Drop the hostiles. Pick up their bounties. Repeat as necessary. I like that everyone has decided that they want to play as the lady that can heal. Whoever gets the most bounties becomes the hotshot, and becoming the hotshot is cool. Thank you, Carlito. Saying the colors on stream are super saturated. I don't know. I'm looking at the preview window. This is what I'm seeing. This is exactly what I'm seeing. As far as I can tell. Eh, maybe that's a little. Maybe that's a little intense. Let's see if that fixes it. Oh, God. Tabbed out of the window. In the... There we go. Warfare was easy. There'd be a lot fewer goose stepping fascists in the world. One of the enemies is the new hotshot. Show them they aren't so special. New hotshot is one of ours. Look at him go. Um, so I, I, yeah, I don't know. This game has just a real low rent vibe to it. I don't know. Like it, it's, there's nothing, I, th there's nothing especially like wrong with it in terms of like, oh, this is broken as far as I can tell. Um, it's more of a feeling of like, why would I play this? Like, what is, uh, and, and, and I, the only answer I can come up with really is, well, if you want to play competitive multiplayer in Call of Duty, they want you to pay $70 for it. This is $0. Also, yes, everyone knows I'm a, the huge Ghost Recon Phantoms fan. Ah, that grenade bounced. I gotta get away from it. Okay. Great. I'm finding the up-close, like... I'm getting into a close range gunfight with someone. I'm finding that really, I'm losing most of those encounters and I, I'm not sure why. I don't know, I don't think it's a factor of like, I'm not aim like encounters that I would potentially win more of in Call of Duty. I'm like, I don't know, like am I aiming incorrectly or you know, is my aiming need to be tweaked or, but I feel like I'm getting overwhelmed up close. Um, Maybe I need to turn up the sensitivity on the controller. Maybe that's it. Or maybe people are taking different weapons. Uh... All right, I think I unlocked another gun. So they, they have challenges in the game to complete with guns that will then unlock other guns. And now my gun is level five. Uh, you unlock uh, attachments and stuff by leveling up the guns. But the attachments are all gun specific. So now that I'm level five with this gun, I don't want to necessarily change to another assault rifle because I don't want to have to start over. <laughs> Uh, no, it, 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 I, I believe that is correct, is that, yes, the the attachments are gun-specific, because you have to level up every gun. We can check that uh, afterwards, I guess, but, but I'm fairly certain that uh, everything is specific to the weapon you are using. Collecting banter. 
suerte. The color on that was weird. Why? Alright, whatever. So, you know, the, the different ability, like this, the ability I have is this, like, you know, pill bottle or whatever. Um, but uh, some of the factions will have abilities that will ping the map and, and show you enemies through walls and stuff like that. Um, and so, like, you're kind of constantly getting revealed by other people's abilities and all that stuff. And... We're losing. This is your to start You say the shooting has no impact to it. Yeah, it kind of. I. Uh, Yes, I, there's something about the weapons that don't feel hard. Um, the whole thing looks a bit esports, and not just because this map is designed to, you know, as a paintball arena or whatever, but like the whole thing is a little like flavorless. I also need to check and see if there are any colorblind options for the enemy team stuff. Like, this this red is not working for me. And uh, for a game that, that, you know, they went out of their way to have like three characters per faction and, and instead of just like, hey, we're selling skins or, or whatever, um, there's really not much uh, personality in the different characters and skins and, and when whatever else. Like, you know, th they have voice lines, um, but it just doesn't, yeah, I don't know. Like, the, the whole thing just feels empty to me. Uh, from the, the level design. And, you know, the level. The, one of the things they talked about is like, oh, we're pulling levels and concepts from across the games that, you know, a lot of these characters come from and whatever else. So there's like a, a fake tech company um, office, campus level from, uh, I believe it's from Watch Dogs. Um, let's get out of the lobby here and take a look at... Uh, so I'm still using one of their pre-made loadouts because I haven't unlocked enough stuff. Like, I, that has more stuff unlocked on it than, than the things I've unlocked so far, but we're getting there. Heavy grip, plus 10% ADS flinch, plus 2.5% horizontal recoil control. Sure, why not? You know, and, and at higher levels, you'll unlock more stuff. And you can get gold camos for your gun by leveling it up a lot. Um... Let's, uh, so yeah, the, the question was, can we, so we, I unlocked the AK-47. And yeah, so. This, the reflex sight is locked because the AK is level one and not level two, so. All that stuff is, uh. Gun specific. Any 
and then the uh, the challenges will dictate. I, I I don't know if there's a backdoor way to unlock these guns or not, but like you see, I unlocked the AK by doing 4,000 damage with assault rifles. I'll unlock this M16 by getting three more headshots with assault rifles. And so you kind of work your way up the tree with each gun style, I guess, by doing this stuff. Um, which is, I don't know, I, that doesn't... That, that, that doesn't necessarily rub me the wrong way, uh, but like player level seems like it kind of does nothing. Unless that's another way to do it. Maybe the, maybe you could do it both ways. Let's look. Yeah, no, it just says locked. It doesn't say like locked until you're level. Unlocked via challenge. Unlocked via battle pass. Um, I don't know. I could, I could take it or leave it. I, oh, you know what? It, I bet the devices, this stuff. Nope. Those are challenges too. So what does your player level get you? I guess nothing, huh? I guess that's a way for them to sidestep the whole unlock tree, like kind of standard, the standard way of unlocking your stuff and prestiging or whatever else. Um, and yeah, they're selling a bunch of stuff. You know, you can, um... This, there's a bundle that unlocks all of the... Well, it's not showing here. There's, there's some out-of-game bundles where you could spend, I think, $69, $70 on, like, the... the DeadSec faction and a bunch of skins and some X coins, which I... I wonder if they're, like, bummed or if they're... Maybe they're stoked about it. I don't know, but, like... In the time that this game has been in development, Twitter renamed itself to X, and it's the shittiest, like, X is now the shittiest letter <laughs> by default. Instead of one of the top five letters, uh, it is now maybe, like, bottom 25, bottom 25th or 26th. Um, and so now they have stuff like X coins that you're just like, oh, wait, did Twitter roll out its fucking horrible bank idea? Is that what that is? No? Oh. Okay. I wonder how they feel about that. Um, let's play on the welcome playlist. I don't know. Maybe we'll try an SMG this time. Take the zones. Defend them to the end. Oh, okay. Amigos, Apparently. Capture zone, zone is ours now. Uh, let's try, uh, this, uh, do we want to turn invisible or we want to highlight enemies? Like that's, loadout updated. this loadout gives us a flashbang instead of capturing zone a. a real grenade. Good. Scare them off. I'm detecting hostiles on zone C. Let's run all the way over here and then we'll hit our ping and see what we can see. Yeah, do I think they'll sell recognizable characters at a premium? Like, I, they should. Um, Like, yeah, they should probably sell Sam Fisher for this fucking thing, right? I mean... Yes, Ding Chavez. But like, who else do they have? That, that it's like a real per, you know, that that, that would be recognizable from voice lines. Going for zone B. Um. Like the celebrities that from that they have put in their games might be too expensive for something like that, you know. Team capturing zone C. All right, range on the SMG seems okay. Maybe that's maybe that's a better way to go than some of the assault rifles. Capture zone secured. Hostiles on the scope in zone B.
Uh, okay, we can still. Where do they hide it? There we go. Friendly's capturing zone A. I'm detecting hostiles on zone C. Yeah, that'd probably work better. Capture zone contested. Oof. But yeah, you know, it doesn't have any named characters. Or I mean, all the characters have names, but they're not like they're not necessarily from those games. They're just like it's the Splinter Cell spy type of person. And here's a lady, and they're all wearing night vision goggles, like your friend Sam Fisher. But it's not Sam Fisher. Um, so I imagine that eventually they would like. Why wouldn't you, right? Eventually go like, oh well, well we want to have. We want to put Sam Fisher in this thing, but then are you then Rogue Echelon agent active are you getting a sound alike? Are you getting, well, I don't know. What's the current status of the Sam Fisher voice stuff? Cause I know they at one point stopped using, um, what's his face and people were not thrilled about it, even though it was like, here's a younger Sam Fisher, it would make sense for him to not be as fucking gravelly as fucking Michael Ironside. Did they put him in siege? Okay, yeah, see, that's... They already have an outlet for that sort of stuff in Rainbow Six Siege, so it's sort of weird that they have this game. It's weird that they have this game at all, honestly. Uh, Zone A under assault. It's not the worst idea in the world, right? To go like, hey, man, fucking Call of Duty's real big. I don't know if you know this, but people, a lot of people buy that game. Uh, we bet we could do a free to play uh, first person shooter, and uh, we bet we could uh, do that pretty good. And we brought in, you know, some Call of Duty folks to run it. And, uh, and yeah, you know, that's, that's, I see why you would do that, like from a business standpoint. And so if they, I don't know, I don't know, I wonder what they're like, what, what numbers that would they feel good about, you know, um, We're taking a. for this game. Can anyone provide first aid? Is it, uh, you know, what percentage of Call of Duty's player base do they need to speak to in order to feel like it's, it's, a, it's a success? <laughs> yeah, they're not putting on Steam, so they, they're obviously... This you know, they still reserve. they still care about getting their full C. cut of whatever DLC they sell. Zone C, uh, they didn't right. rush it right onto Steam. I mean, it'll be on Steam eventually, right? I mean, that, that's become the Ubisoft way of like putting a game on Steam some number of months later, and they've been getting a little faster with it all the time. Do I think it's a coincidence that the Black Ops teaser Don't dropped earlier? Uh, yes. I, I, I don't think that uh, Activision or Treyarch or any... I, I don't think that they're like... I don't think that they're sweating this game. How about that? Um, Revealing enemies. I think we all see where this is heading. It's time to think about extraction. On Especially because I, th you know, they they when they first announced this game and first started talking about it, they tried to get real fucking gung ho about like speaking to the Call of Duty community as like this game's not gonna have no skill based matchmaking, you know, like uh, the like speaking to kind of the worst parts of the Call of Duty fan base, and then Modern Warfare Three came out and. I think also did a good job of speaking to that fan base without, you know, without sounding pandering in the process. Um, you know, when this game got announced, Call of Duty was maybe in a lower place and they've had they've had a pretty good couple of games. Also, um, 
this welcome playlist does have skill-based matchmaking on it. They, they, they call it out and say, this playlist has skill-based matchmaking. You're like, yeah, because it's good. Because skill-based matchmaking is the right answer to have players of multiple skill levels playing against each other. It's That's, yeah. <laughs> so even the thing that they tried to like beat their chest about and, and, and cater to uh, absolute dopes about, uh, they, they were like, oh, well, yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah, we, st we have it here too. Um, I'm not really. Yeah, this this is. I don't. I don't think I like the aesthetic of. Like the ideas are not bad. Like when you when you uh, get killed, you can send an emoji to another player, and it looks like they've got a slot where you could theoretically buy different sets of emojis. Um. But, and that, that's not a bad idea. I don't know. Send a little thumbs up or thumbs down or whatever to somebody. I've never done it. I've never felt the need to do it. Um, but I don't know. I, I'm just, I, I don't, the, the levels are by design fucking all over the place, right? Because you've got like a fake Google headquarters and then you've got this place, you know? Um, oh shit, Reed's office? Reed is in the... Should I remember who Reed is? I, uh, I don't, like I, and I, I'm just, I'm not really feeling any of these abilities either. So yeah, I, it's, it's I, yeah. I feel like I look at a lot of this stuff and and think, yeah, sure, like they they did it, they they made this thing. Um. That's Spanish for trash. This LMG is so low. Uh, you can't go prone. Which is interesting. I'm not necessarily opposed to that. As someone who rarely goes prone. And uh, think that in Call of Duty, most people only go prone so that they can fucking try to dive, like dolphin dive, as they round a corner and see you. And it's just like the dumbest... This Reed's office? Enemies on the zone. Tee hee. Uh, you know, in Modern Warfare 3 does 
does a fair amount of this as well, but like the the slide to jump, I, I think works pretty well. Like feels nice, uh, like as a movement thing. Oops. But yeah, this this game feels like it. It's uh, that they that they had to lock down a lot of their ideas a long time ago and uh they they put they placed some bets on where they thought call of duty was going to head and i think call of duty ended up kind of eating this game's lunch like a year ago you know six months ago or something you know um like all the stuff that that this game was trying to stake out and say this is this is what we're doing differently. I think Call of Duty does this, a lot of that stuff pretty well now too, and and this game I don't think does anything especially well. It's fine, but uh, but it feels like they're chasing a trend that is not the trend anymore, I guess. Or they're addressing an audience that is having their needs met a different way. The capture zone is changing location. Capturing. So, you know, it, it just... It's a game without a country. Enemies on the zone. France. France is the country. Is there a ping system? No, I don't believe there's any kind of, uh, no, I don't believe so. I can, I guess I can check the controller. No. Team comp overlay. I pushed that. It didn't do anything. Good. I don't, the, the ability stuff, I, 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 I don't. You know, uh, I, I don't really care for ability shooters. I don't really care for, for like hero shooter type things. I had my time with Overwatch and I, I thought that that game was pretty neat for what it was at the time. Um, but like when Call of Duty was trying to do it, uh, I thought that that sucked. And it created a situation where, like, you know, because it's a, a game where you're buying skins, you're, you know, you're like, oh, your character isn't available because only one person on the team can pick that. And, you know, so there's sort of a, like, stuff around that that, um, it's just not what I'm looking for out of a shooter, ultimately. My favorite Quiet Riot album. We're on the zone. It feels like it, you know, it, it feels very much, um, I always talk about that there was this like weird era of PS3 downloadable shooters like heavy whatever Afghanistan and just all these like generic kind of Call of Duty likes that were coming along. Um, this 
game kind of reminds me of that. Though those games didn't really have much multiplayer, and if they did, no one ever played them, so... Uh... That's fire everywhere. Um... It's like hum noise when you're in the zone is I'm not a huge not a huge fan of it. Popping my ult as soon as I see somebody. As soon as the fighting starts. Well, my he weird heal thing does not make me invincible. <laughs> Yeah, it's a good question. Is is there is yeah is there a good free to play game like this right now? Um, I guess the answer is kind of no. I mean, on phones you could you could certainly play a lot of shitty phone games that are trying to be this. Um, and so, like I said, I, I think that's that's kind of like the one thing it has going for it is if you're in this weird situation where you like Call of Duty, but don't want to buy Call of Duty, you could settle for this. I don't think this is as good as even, even Modern Warfare 3, which is a game I think has, you know, they made some disappointing changes from, from 2 to 3. Most of those changes are just like, I don't think the maps at launch were, were good. And so they've, they've had a lot of better map, you know, they've had better maps since then. Um, yeah, exactly. It's, it's no Bebe's kids. Uh, for the, I guess, the Super Nintendo, you know. Protect the zone. Protect the zone. You heard the man. I failed to protect the zone. Um, but yeah, you know, if you like, let's say you're the sort of person who wants to play just a little bit of Call of Duty, but you don't want to buy it. Uh, this game is for you right up until, uh, you know, October or November when the next one comes out and it's on Game Pass. Then what? Not that Game Pass is free, but uh, it changes the economics and it, ch it changes the proposition for this game, I think, quite a bit when you could be playing Call of Duty on Game Pass. I, you know what? Enemies on the zone. This game is a better game than Combat Master, but I think I would rather play Combat Master. I have found that game to be more in, like maybe more enjoyable. But um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, if you're a kid and your parents won't get you Call of Duty, and maybe that's why this game like doesn't look as gritty or whatever as Call of Duty um, because they're trying to approach a, a slightly younger demographic with it. What are kids like? Hackers with cool glasses and shiny flashy skins. Like, cool, should we put Cheech and Chong in this game? No, man. <laughs> Um, I will say, you know, like initially I was like, well, maybe I should put some money into this and unlock the faction and, and whatever else. Um, and then I thought better of it and, uh, decided not to spend any money on this. And I feel like that has been the right move. I don't really feel like... I don't really feel like there's anything here that I want. Like, none of none of this stuff aesthetically is, like, pleasing. Or, or like, it's, it's a combination, right? Like, the... You care more about these aesthetics, if you like the game and you're going to play it more and you're going to, you know, like, like all of it is, 
is kind of in a cycle. Um, where you... You like the game, so you buy the skins, so you play the game more, so you like the game more, so you buy more, you know. Uh, that's the... Probably the ideal. Uh, I just want a different announcer. Like, I don't even... I, I want to play as the, the lady with the healing pills, but I'm fucking Roger. sick of the announcer, so... This off's a bit raucous for the Echelon playbook, but I'm sure you'll manage. Three. Um, but I don't think this stuff looks good, and I don't like the game enough, which is kind of a, a double whammy, I, see, I guess you would say. Friendly's going for zone B. Capture zone contested. Capture zone secured. Friendly's capturing zone A. Tango dispatch. <laughs> Capture zone A is at risk. I turned invisible and then blew up. Capture zone secured. Detecting hostiles on zone C. This is a rough off, but you're a pro. You'll bounce back. Team capturing zone C. Zone secured. I don't know what that was. Oh, it's a flashbang? Okay. But yeah, this is the, yeah. I, I uh, maybe it's not. I I, I was tempted. It's it's tempting to say like, hey, this is one of the most competitive genres around. But that that's really not the case anymore. You know, it's it's really just that there are there's a massive player in this space, and that's hard to compete with. Like millions of players have shown that they are willing to pay full retail price for a great game like this. Maybe great's a strong word there. Um, and so, for some of those existing players, like the free to playness, the free to playness of this is not necessarily the the gate. And because this game got delayed, you know, as much as it did, like there's probably a, a, a time of the year when a game like this could come out. Like in the middle of a Call of Duty cycle, Captain you know, Zone like detected. exactly six months Friendly between releases or whatever. Um, but now it's coming out as they're preparing to reveal the next one. And so, you know, excitement from this player base is about to be pushed in the direction of the next Call of Duty away from this, you know? Zone C. Fucking invisible dog. Yeah, like the summer of Splitgate. Exactly. This game could have had its like summer of Splitgate. Though I guess Splitgate stayed popular with some number of people, and that to the point where they said like, "Hey, we we need to shut this game down." Heads up! 
I'm detecting our solar um, attack in enemy hands. And, and they just kind of announced their next thing. Which no one... I, I feel like no one outside of that community... Like, I, I... At this point, I've got RSS feeds for most video game sites that run news. And, like, they did a weekend event where they, they did their awards for the, the Splitgate community and all of this other stuff. And straight up in the middle of that, they kind of showed, hey, here's the thing we're doing without necessarily saying as much. And no one wrote about it. And, like, within their community, I'm sure it was, like, a big deal. And, and, and you know, the, the right people saw that stuff. But, like, no one fucking wrote about it at all. And I felt kind of bad because it was like, man, split gate. Friendlies on zone C. Had its had had a time, you know, like 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 split gate. It was like well crafted for what it was. It came out at the right time. Like th there was a lot of things they kind of either got right deliberately or found themselves, you know, benefiting from, you know, Microsoft's Halo delays or whatever it is. Um, and I wonder, yeah, like what is. You know, what's the... I was invisible. You dumbass. I don't know. The the one that makes it so you can see dudes through walls seem like it's, it seems like it's way better than almost all of the other abilities. It's either that or you're healing. I don't know. I think that's, those are the kind of the two... The one where it's like, I put down a little oh, shield. Um sucks that all it always does that's always a bad ability in games like this i tried to throw a grenade what do i have i guess i have a flashbang or something huh with this loadout But like I have to like level up guns and unlock stuff to to get off of their kind of pre-made loadouts and feel effective, I guess. Going dark. Zone B is vulnerable. Friendly's moving on C. I would rather just have a lethal grenade and a utility, like a type of grenade, than the, these abilities. I just, I know that's like fucking pointless because basically what I'm saying is I would rather be playing Call of Duty, but uh, I would rather be playing Call of Duty. We're securing Zone A. Ultra ready for deployment. Cool. Zone C compromised. Zone contested. Ah. Zone B compromised. Eh, maybe that maybe the mobile shield is is has uh, some merit, huh? Especially because most people will not have unlocked sticky grenades by this point. Which I assume is the counter to that. You're off your game, agent. Match best objective score. That's me. I played the objective. Unlike the rest of you fuckos. You say shield guys feel awful to play against, but like, okay, in Call of Duty, if you see a shield guy and he's like just turtling up and just like shimmying around in front of you, that's why you always pick the sticky grenades because you just stick one to the shield and fucking laugh maniacally. 
or like and then like run away because the evil run at you so that you blow up too and that's that's fun too or like sometimes if you've got a shield you could drop it in favor if there's a weapon on the ground you could pick that up and drop the shield and get away like it's i think that's fucking super interesting it doesn't happen all that often but i love fucking people over <laughs> when they when they have uh the shield Secure those captures on Teams going for B. Oh, I don't know. It keeps throwing me into games that are already active. It's like, because people, I assume people keep quitting. Um. Well, what? Capture zone I haven't even, uh, like, I'm still level one on this fucking. Maybe that's the other thing is because it's a free to play game. They have, they have slowed the progression down to a fucking crawl on some of this stuff. Because the idea that I played like a whole match with an SMG and it's still like halfway to level two is, uh, well, that's long. Zone B is vulnerable. Keep it up. Any signs of XP boosts? Yes. It has a uh, weapon XP boosters and battle pass oh, XP you. boosters. They give you five of them for playing the game. One of the challenges is getting point blank kills with a pistol. And because I in theory, want to at least unlock Zone stuff. Epsilon agent activated sonar goggles. Revealing enemies. Uh -huh. I also need to get some melee kills, I think, to unlock something. Friendlies locking down zone C. About to lose B. Is Cheech and Chong in? No, no, Cheech nor Chong is in this game, which, uh... Man, I died weird. We hold all capture zones. Good work, agents. They're on zone C. Zone A under assault. Like, the movement speed feels all right. Like, I don't know. Like, the... I don't know. Like, it, it, it's not without merit. Whatever. I, you know, but... But there is kind of this aspect of it. Of like, well... Oh, you jumped down there. I thought maybe that would go differently than it did. Time to kill seems uh, long. Long. Too long. Mission accomplished. Yes, run. Whatever is happening here, I love it. Whatever this is, I love it. This is extremely erotic. I love it. And I love it. Yeah, what other, what characters, what, what Ubisoft characters would you put into this thing? It'd be like Sam Fisher seems like the obvious first choice. Um, you know, you're going to put fucking Aiden Pierce in it with his iconic hat. 
the Watch Dogs 2 protagonist. Like, there's all the Watch Dogs, like, characters you could probably put in there. Yeah, does Desmond. Desmond is an interesting, like... It'd be funny if they put Ezio and just, like, had a team of fucking assassins. And they're just like, I don't know, here's Ezio running around with a shotgun. Like, I think that would be fun. In terms of, like, a really dumb thing they could do. That I would go, yeah. Absolutely. Like, why not leverage this? Um, a South Park faction? Did they publish the last one of those, or did they just do those other ones? They didn't publish that last one, I think. I could get this skin. Uh, is there anything? No. Oh. Like, there's a million different variants of Clancy dudes they could put in here, but, but, you know. Sure, yeah, the characters, the, the, the style from Hyperscape. Some of those characters they could put in. Why not? Why not? Oh, man. So this is the, this is the escort the payload. Refuse delivery of this package agent. Dude, I fucking hate this as a game mode. I did not like it in Overwatch. Like this is obviously a lot of that stuff's gonna be personal taste, but the last thing I wanna do is fucking escort a dumb fucking thing and have it walk back and forth across the map. I just don't wanna do it. I just don't want to do it. I hate this. I hate this thing. The package must not reach the delivery zone. Disrupt the escorting hostels. Uh, someone says the finals is superior to this in every way. I Okay. Uh the finals is a different game, you know? Like that's That's totally valid for you to feel that way, but like I like to me those are two very different types of shooter. You're down, but never out, agent. You got this. I don't much care for the finals either. Uh, I, I was hoping that I thought I, I thought I would like the finals. I, there's like aspects of the finals that I think are cool from like a gear perspective and like the foam gun and the destruction. But something about the level design and the destruction and, and some of that like if anything, the finals to me feels like a small scale battlefield game. You know, like the, the type of battlefield game they don't really make anymore or, you know, whatever. Uh, e e e e Changing mags. Hostile clear to checkpoint. Not good. But I think also when it comes to like this style of shooter, I, I generally am looking for shorter play sessions than this mode allows for. Because like we're gonna do this and then we're gonna change sides and do it again and I fucking don't wanna do that. Like it just takes too long. You're on this map for too long. There's, you know, it's just like, eh. Also, this has the longest uh, respawn timer, I think, of any of the modes, if I 
remember right. Maybe I would get my point blank pistol kills up. <sighs> I, need a medic. I got set on fire. Seems bad. Hostiles nearing checkpoint. How's the map quality and quantity? I I have not fallen in love with any of these maps. They um I feel like many of the maps that come up, I like when in when they are selected randomly, I go, uh, this one again. So I, I don't know the exact number of maps in the game because I don't you know, there's no practice mode uh that seemed like there was a section on the menu for it, but it doesn't do anything. Um So I'm, I'm not sure. I'm sure you can look up, like, what are they... Eh. Do I think the game's camper-friendly? I, You know, I have seen a few people with scope glint here and there, but I... Uh, I don't know. The map design doesn't really seem like it's really full of long, sniper-friendly hallways. But, uh, you know, because a lot of the modes are obje objective-based, like, you're kind of moving around the map a lot. And so... Detecting our sonar tech in enemy hands. So it's it's you know it, that that I think by design it's not like super campery. Well, I guess you know if you find your spot on a map for like hey checkpoint three of this payload mission or whatever like this is the spot to camp. But since you can't go prone, um, Hostiles closing on delivery zone. You know it's it's a little less I don't know a little less camper friendly maybe I would say. Oh I was missing. Did you see where I was shooting over that guy's shoulder a lot? You know, maybe Valve's new game will come along and save the day for everybody. Maybe Deadlock will be the thing that changes shooters forever. got in the zone it resets the retreat timer and so it'll sit here a lot longer now and ugh. but yeah it's uh I, d I don't want to do this and I definitely don't want to do it for a second round now you're on the attack now push the package Can you not filter game modes? Yeah, you can You can create a custom playlist of the modes, but I, I guess one of my problems with this game is I don't much care for any of the modes. Like, Domination's fine, it's Domination, but I don't know that I love the maps enough to, you know, like, 
especially I, I feel like in the early days of a game where you're still kind of getting a feel for the shooting and how, you know, like how that stuff, how your TTKs are and so on and so forth. Like I, I want to play team deathmatch to get a feel for it. And then, you know, as I go on, maybe I'll get some, you know, maybe I'll work on a custom playlist that has some objective modes in there. Maybe I won't. Um, but it's just not even an option here. And, and I just don't think that's a great, I, I don't, I don't think that's a great idea. I think they, I think that's a mistake on their part. I'm sure that You know, a lot of that probably ties into some philosophical feeling they have about not just making Call of Duty while also kind of just making Call of Duty. Um, and so the closest they get is a mode that is sort of like kill confirmed. Um, I guess this, this opening part of this map feels like it's, I mean, the, some fools just got sniped pretty bad right there by somebody. Is this PC? Yeah, this is this is running on a personal computer. You're down. And it just crashed. So that's X Defiant. Uh, it's on you. It's on Ubisoft's thing. It's not on Steam. Because why would you want uh, people to discover your free-to-play game and play it? Um. Now we're gaming. Advancing. Show me the money. This way. Now, why would you play X Defiant when you could be playing Combat Master? Is the question everyone needs to be asking themselves. video gaming right here.
Like it auto runs as soon as you push up on the fucking analog stick. I mean, if I if I push less up on it, it, it does not. But but if you if you just mash up on the stick, it takes off running. And I don't think there's a way to fucking turn that off. And you know what? I don't. I wouldn't want to turn it off. Locking on target. Can I go up this road? Okay, I can, apparently. We're up here now. Fucking gaming so fucking hard, man. Oh! Did I got out gamed. How sick they cross those guns over when you shoot them. This game's fucking dope. promotion. Go, go, go. Games don't need to look any better than this. When we talk about, hey man, 4K is ruining games. What if every game just looked like this? Is that what you want? No? What do you mean? This is the aggro drift of video games. Dancing.
coming. I am on it. I should be putting money into this. I should I should buy some stuff in this game. The level of enjoyment I've had here. Oh, yeah, that fucked that up. And I love a good arms race mode, you know? Thank you for tuning in. I'm the best player. Look at that knife. Do I have other modes set? I yeah, I do. I was just, uh... We'll turn on combat master mode because that's their like low player count battle royale mode, and it's also okay. Yeah, all right. We're getting we're getting combat master mode. at it. <laughs> out of bullets. Is this? Ah! I have no armor. So one of the interesting things about this game is that it's available on phones. And so, um, sometimes you encounter players who just can't get it done with the game. Oh, okay. Fuck you. How about that? Look at this! Talk to me about fucking X Defiant. Look at this! This is maximum video gaming right here. You cannot video game harder than this.
That's got to be a bot, right? Or is it a mobile player? Doesn't matter. Does not matter. <laughs> Surely that's not a human. Can I not pick that gun up because I already have a gun? I don't know. We need some armor though, I know that much. Oh, up on the, there we go. Three players alive. The intensity. Oh, that guy had more than one life left, so... So he was able to respawn. Yeah, that's a bot, dude. Apparently had all his lives left. So. <laughs> Give me a reason to not be up here. I don't like playing video games this way, but... I will. I wonder if there's fall damage or if you have a parachute. 
Also, oh no, okay. It is running at 400 frames per second. I was like, what's up with my ping? But no, that's, that's the FPS. So this seems to imply that it's someone on an Android device. But who can say, really? Kill me! So it's like, yeah, it could be a bot, but also what if it was just some kid somewhere <laughs> who has no idea what the fuck they're doing? I don't know where that person went. They They went behind this tree, and for all I know, they're still fucking there. All right, you did it, I'm bored. Poison gas launched. The game has had enough. Thing is, I still have a life left, so... And I killed this guy twice, so... Yeah. This is this is video games. I am the only one survived. Let's try one more of these. All right, another arms race. I'm on it. On verge of death. Go, go, go. This way. What do we got here? See, all these players are on Steam, and four of them are using mice.
weighed the scope. When you're aiming down sights on a scoped weapon like that, the way that just blocks out your entire view is pretty amazing. I mean, it's, you know, hey, scopes kind of do that, sort of. Sort of. Also, why it has what looks like the like there's a bootleg Spike TV logo on those boxes. Tense, baby. This is that real shit. Yeah, I, I, like, no joke, man. I, you know, like, I'm, I, it's, it's like funny or whatever, but I, I am having a much better time with this janky, fucked up thing than X Defiance. Perhaps it is, is because I am the best player. Maybe that's why. I mean, what if, you know, what if, what if, what if I played one more? All right, back to combat master. <laughs> So here we, in theory, have five players on phones. See you on the other side. Getting a little careless. Ah, there are no bullets in these guns! All right, eighth place, that's terrible. Ah. Is there a speed or accuracy penalty for jumping? I, nah, I don't, I don't, I don't think so. I, you know, maybe there's a little something, but, um, I don't want 25 milliseconds slower aim down sights.
carry two primaries. Better explosives. Yeah, those perks seem about right. What if I had a cool character, though? Like Street Fighter. Or Dirt Bike Dude. Open Pack. Oh. I see. <laughs> it's like Open Pack. Oh, do I have it? Oh, no. Open the page where you can buy this. Ah, yes, I see. How much for Shadow Rider? Six dollars. Level 100 of the Battle Pass. I was wondering, can I, can you even change your name? Yeah, I guess you can. Okay. Uh, still a lot of coming soons in this game from last time I looked at it. Uh, but I don't know. That's fine. Whatever. Red combat zone parachute. Oh, I love the dramatic music for looking at this gun. I mean, as the best player, I should have the best gun, right? It's really only a matter of time before I spend money on this game, huh? It's the right thing to do. Is to support this mess of a thing. Ah, yes, a Tomyak finish. Oh, you can only pick one kill streak? I see. The Fire Mace. The Fight Club. The Shadow Lancer. Um, anyway. Wait, what is, there's a solo mode? One of 64. What are you telling me? What are you telling me? What is this? <laughs> Solo queue for Battle Royale, but it's 64 players. This is That's way more than the 10 that are <laughs> in the other. Are you telling me they went and added a proper... Battle Royale mode to this? Crazy. Crazy. This is going to take forever to fill up. I don't know what the minimum player count is before it'll even do a thing, but... But, uh... 
We've got three out of 64 right now. I don't know how well long I'm willing to wait on this. Yeah, I don't, like this game brings a smile to my face, maybe for the wrong reasons, but I enjoy this mess. Look at this. Look at what they did. These motherfuckers. Yes. Show me the money. Look at that. It's like they went and made a game. They made a game and they <laughs> crazy. I have to assume that almost all of these players are bots. If it was like three players connected. Oh, it's... No, it doesn't tell us. It has contra... Oh, no. Contract's coming soon. Okay. <laughs> you get getting a little framey here down to 70 or 80 frames a second. We got Freedom Park. We got the Fortress. Oh, can't shoot while I'm parachuting. Hang on. Look at this. Look at the Look at this. They made one of these. Have weird camera control in that part. Good luck. Can I uh, ping the map or anything? No. Okay. There's a weapon box on this floor that I thought I saw. All right, we got a gun. Someone just got a triple kill with friggin' Wolverine claws. Let's get that. We've got an amount of money, so like there's like buy stations and stuff. Like they they went and made themselves one of these games, huh? Look at that. Oh, I guess I want to keep. Ah, uh, that one's got three pips instead of two, so it's probably better attachment-wise. <laughs> Sometimes a weird delay when opening the map. Look at this. 
fun little tubes. Little pipe run. What do we think? Think that was a bot, maybe? What do you think? No, right? But also, like, I, I don't know. When you when you realize it's also a game on phones, I think that's where it's sort of. Oh, oh! See, I got fucking worked. Standing by. Oh, look at this! It's got a fucking gulag! Good luck. Loadout drops. Telling me the game got loadout drops. Let's go get a loadout. I don't know. I don't think I want a loadout, though. I don't know that I... I didn't customize a loadout well enough to, for this to necessarily be a good thing. Ah, those other guns just disappeared too. Okay, what do we got? 14 players left? Where's the circle? We're kind of in the middle of it. Like, this is fine. This, you know, the, the shooting is maybe not amazing, right? I mean, the... the there's something about the, the swimminess of the guns. Where did that guy go? What happened? Did that player just disappear? Look at how little scope sway there is, even for a sniper rifle. Just fucking holds. It's beautiful. Right, we need to be able to see over this fence. Gulag's close. <laughs> nine players. Well, nine people. Nine. Oh. 
Oh. Where was that action coming from? Alright, we were in this building before. I remember that gun being there. Nope, should not have taken my shot there. Oh, look at that grenade throw. Look at how bad it is. Hi. Two players remaining. Oh, I got to armor up, huh? Hey, there's a buy station in the circle still. Maybe. No. No. Almost, almost more fun to have this like nightmare long battle with all these bots knowing that at the end you're going to have to face a real human. <laughs> um, this game's neat, man. I don't, you know, it's fucked up and who knows. But it's it's made progress. Like I feel like every time I come back to it, they've added to it. Like combat zone was not here last time I fired it up. Um, and it's like it, co competent is maybe the word. I don't. You know, it's uh, the shooting feels fucked up. I think this game is fucking cool. <laughs> 
it's uh, and it's I had, I, I just, you know, I think that game is way more fun than X Defiant. Is X Defiant a quote unquote, like a better game? Sure. Totally. A lot of resources and a lot of know-how in making that type of game went into making that game, right? Like there's a, there's like an on paper thing that you go like, well, clearly X Defiant is going to be the superior game here. I mean, look at the, re you know, look, look at the, the pedigree here and, and, and everything else, but Combat Master is in some ways extremely shameless. I mean, that, that mode there, the way they designed their map, the way they, um, the way it says combat zone full screen when the match ends, just like Warzone does, like the way it has a gulag, the way it has, you know, seem like they're, they're building up to having contracts and some of the other Warzone type stuff, like. Combat Master is shameless. Absolutely shameless. But there's something freeing about that. Um, and the way that it feels kind of busted, the way the shooting is is like very all over the place. And, and when you get in these gun battles, like you're moving forward. So when you push up on the stick, they start running and it's sort of weird. And like, it's my kind of broken, I guess I would say. It's the same, um, it's the same spirit that makes me really enjoy a lot of kind of off-brand fighting games, I guess I would say. You know, like those Jackie Chan fighting games are like fucked up and weird, right? And you know what? They're awesome. Um This is like one of those. This is like a weird off-brand fighting game, you know? Uh, like, there's there's something about, like, yes, <laughs> the poverty FPS scene, for sure. And, and you know, it's free-to-play and it's on phones, so, like, that kind of lines up in a lot of, a lot of ways. Um, or I guess it's on phones. I don't know if it's on phones in this country or not. It seems like it probably would be, but let me... I, I want to check now. Um... Combat Master. Yeah. Combat Master Mobile. It's got a picture of the Street Fighter skin right there in their uh, app icon. 4.7 out of 5. Updated two months ago. What are they selling? What a... Uh... Battle Pass Pack, Desert Cobra Master. Yes, yeah, they're selling all the same stuff for similar prices. I wonder if there's a way to link your account so you can, you know, so I can play on the go. Um, game is just a good time. I don't, I don't know what to tell you, man. Like it, it's, it's. Uh, I'm not apologetic about it. I'm not. I, I think Combat Master is a is a fucking good time. I think, again, I, I think that X Defiant, there's a whole lot going for it on in other ways. Visual quality, audio, the voice line reads, though I might say I, I prefer the, the voice lines in Combat Master. <laughs> um, I should play more Combat Master. I feel like that's what I learned there. Two things. One... I should buy a, I should buy something in Combat Master. I've played it enough now that I know I want to play more of it and I should I should buy some skins in Combat Master to fuel whatever fucking nightmare these people are on. Uh last time I I did last time I I played the game I I think someone from the dev team ended up commenting on a YouTube video or something like that so it's like I don't I don't know what to make of that. I, I don't know what like it's easy to think like this is just some insane Eastern European bootleg operation. And, and, you know, someone was making jokes in the chat, like, is this a money, money laundering operation? And the, the, the first reaction is just the temptation to go like, I don't, I don't know. But like, I, I don't really know. I thought I looked it up and it said that they were based in New York. Um, I don't know. Uh, someone in the chat is saying that, that you can link accounts. Great. 
Good. I'm not going to download it on phones. Even though I have, you know, whatever, a, a, a phone controller now or whatever. Um, Combat Master brings a smile to my face. X Defiant brings a, hmm, I wonder how this will fare to my face. I wonder how long this game will have or how long, you know, when, you know. Ubisoft has doesn't have a great track record. You know, you look at hyperspace, hypersport, hyper hyperspace. Oh, that's the asteroids thing. Hyper drift, hyper grind. Mm. Was it hyperspace? Couldn't have been hyperspace. You look at that battle hyper 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 whatever it was. Hyperscape. Yes, hyperscape. Thank you. You know, Ubisoft has not had a, an amazing track record of like, um, like supporting, I, well, I don't know. They supported that game, but it just players didn't find it or, or whatever. And they cut ties and that was that. So like, I, it, I, what I'm saying is that Ubisoft is not afraid to shut a game down for sure. Um, yes. Accolade in chat has it right. Combat Master has the love in it of a Half-Life 1 source mod. Yeah. Yes. It feels like a fucking fucked up mod. And the textures are not amazing. Like, it's janky and it's, uh, and it, yeah. It, it, it's definitely like a weird throwback to a different era of like, this game looks busted. It looks like someone remastered fucking action Half-Life or something. You know, like it has this busted this beautifully busted vibe to it. And, uh, I think it's really awesome. I think it's really awesome. I, that feels weird to say, you know, with the, the qualitatively or whatever, but like I, it's, it's a hell of a game. It's no action half-life. I mean, let's not be crazy here. <laughs> um, damn it. Combat master. I just can't quit you. Uh, someone said they uh, that I should try to find a match in Pac-Man Mega Tunnel Battle Chomp Champs. So why don't I... Maybe I'll fire that up. I don't think you should buy this game. If you're thinking like, ah, let's play some Pac-Man Mega Battle... Mega Tunnel Battle Chomp Champs together. I don't... I'm almost certainly going to uninstall it as soon as this stream is over. Here we go. Pac-Man Mega Tunnel Battle Chomp Champs. This came out a couple weeks ago. I made my Pac-Man wear puka glasses and a Dig Dug helmet. It's got the Klonoa hat in it. They have a UI that is where you hit left trigger, right trigger to change things, but it's vertically oriented on the screen, which is uh, interesting. I think there's probably some book about design somewhere that says why you shouldn't do that. Ah. I figured this game had bots because last time I played it, it uh, it didn't take that long to match up, which my assumption, yeah, here we go. 
It has cross-platform play, so theoretically there could be other people on other platforms playing it. It is not just the Steam number, which I know is painfully low. I might also say that uh, the audience for a Pac-Man Mega Tunnel Battle Chomp Champs might not be on PC. Maybe that's a weird antiquated way of thinking about it. You think about Pac-Man as being Japanese developed and so it's the, the console fan base, so it's clearly not going to be on PC. Maybe that maybe that's a weird way of thinking about things these days. But that's that's where my mind immediately goes. Uh, so we can go over to these other players' mazes. Nothing says a real player name quite like uh, two words put together. Oops, that ghost was not blue. Um, So I'm in someone else's maze right now, eating their dots? I think is the situation here. Ah yes, crude chair. Probably also a real person. Sensing a naming scheme here with uh, some of these other players that I'm sure is... Oh, I, I picked up a heart and now that's the ghosts are attracted to me. That's cool if I have a power pellet. Not so cool otherwise. Ugh. But yeah, it seems like it's a four. I mean, you know, you see here, it's a. It's, it looks like it's a four-player game. Um, and so the mazes are kind of like slammed together, and you can go into the other players' mazes and eat their stuff. I guess I like, and there are these missions, and when you do the missions, you get more points. And it, I don't know if players are getting eliminated at set intervals or whenever they run out of lives. It's, uh, I'm sure if I went back and read this stuff, maybe your goal is to eat all the dots in your maze, level up your maze to increase the movement speed of you and the ghosts. So, well then why invade? Why invade other mazes then? I guess to fuck up their shit and prevent them from doing the same. Like the rules just don't seem interesting. I ate that Pac-Man. Ah, yes, Large Padlock, another uh, extremely real name. Oh. I saw the hearts and thought like, well, they're coming to me so I can eat them. But that's social approval, two words, intercapped. Again, another totally real person. Now I have ghost repellent. So they will, uh, because I stink or whatever, they will try to get away from me.
Yeah, none of these other players are real, are they? Because all three of them have that naming style. That's... Where am I? What the fuck happened? I lost track of who I was. Yeah, I don't know, man. No, I don't know. No, play again, no. Play again, no. All right, well, we already queued up. I mean, I guess at least it has bots, right? I need to be level, level 10 to unlock uh, ranked, though, so... Try to catch frightened ghosts before they return to normal. Yeah, you know, Pac-Man stuff. Tunnel gates are used to access other mazes. You can see the number of players. The gates will turn blue when they're unlocked. But then what? Missions appear during elimination and ranked match. Complete them to gain in-game rewards that can aid you. Power items. Yeah, like you can... Oh, so if I'm holding down the button when I collect the item, that's how you store it. I was like, yeah, I noticed like there was like an inventory concept, but... Um, but I wasn't, I, and I never, no, nothing ever showed up in that inventory, but I guess you need to just decide when collecting an item that you don't want to use it immediately. Okay. Also, the movement feels like the... It doesn't feel good. <laughs> like, Pac-Man don't move right. It has sparks. You see, I can kind of brush against the walls like you could in uh, Pac-Man Championship Edition, but... Well, see, now it says I'm in 37th place. So, like, clearly it's supposed to be more than four players. Damn it, poison sauce. I ate that Pac-Man. Oh, it took me back to my maze. I guess that's helpful. I, I don't... out here eating dots, man. I don't know. I ate those Pac-Mans. Yeah, the, the I, yeah, I don't know if it, there's something about this that feels uh, like the latency on my movement doesn't feel good. Oh, 
Oh, that dazed me too? That's unfair. Alright, so I guess I pressured that guy into getting eaten by ghosts. Is that a good thing? Probably. I ate that Pac-Man and I won. The best player. I don't think that this game would necessarily be great with humans, uh, either. <clears throat> yeah, it's just kind of flat. I don't know. It's unfortunate. I, you know, I, I think that the, the idea of a big, massively... You know, high player count, competitive Pac-Man game or whatever. Like, there's probably something to that. But I just don't know that there's enough of an audience for it. Even if it was great, I, you know, it, it's sort of... Like, who's gonna... Like, who's showing up for this? And Pac-Man, you know, it's a legendary thing, right? It's, it's friggin' Pac-Man. But, uh... How do I quit? You know what I mean? Like, there's there's just certain... When you think about the landscape for video games these days, um, and multiplayer video games especially so, um, competitive in nature, are you ever going to rally enough humans that are interested in a multiplayer competitive Pac-Man game in this day and age for there to be a he healthy player base? Um, inside of that game. Was this marketed at all? Um, yes. I mean, I, I got some, I believe I got some press releases about it. I remember they announced it a while ago because after this, this game was originally a Stadia exclusive, I believe. And so when Stadia shut down, it went away and then they were able to release it elsewhere. And so they, they brought it out. Um, like I said, I think it came out last week. Oh no, a couple weeks ago, May 8th. Um, and yeah, you know, like I, I think the way Nintendo does that stuff is smart, right? Because they're like, hey, if you signed up for our service, you get this free game and it's going to go away. And so they can push players into a F099 because the other one got shut down. They don't have to worry about like, oh, it's competing with this other thing. Um, it, it's kind of the smart thing about it. And, uh, I think if you were going to do something like this, you would almost need to do it as part of a service like that, you know, like Nintendo's service. Like that would be a, a smart thing because I think Nintendo does really well with it. I think it would be cool if, um, if, if X, Xbox did something like that because they have a subscription pass, like they're then able to say like, Hey, this week we're opening up whatever game for a multiplayer mode and you can play it all this week uh, because you have game pass and, and help try to funnel everyone towards a game. But I, I don't know. It's hard, especially when there are plenty of other games on that platform. They, they wouldn't lock people out of halo infinite just to say, Hey, it's Forza week or whatever. That would be crazy. Um, but like there's, I think that, you know, for smaller multiplayer focused games or multiplayer only games to succeed, you kind of need something like that. You need to artificially funnel people into that game at the expense of other games. Um, 
I think Nintendo has proved that. I, I think Nintendo has done really, really well with that. Uh, cause Tetris 99 is, you know, like, like, because they have a limited number of those games, right. And they have shut some of them down. Uh, you need to prevent situations like foam stars or this from happening. Right. And not to say that those games are greater, you know, certainly foam stars and Pac-Man mega tunnel battle chomp champs are not as good as probably any of the 99 games that Nintendo has, has put on their service for no additional fee. Um, But like, I, I, I don't think with, with the way things are right now with big multiplayer games taking up everyone's focus socially, the social component to all of that, the, uh, you know, whether it's Fortnite or Minecraft or Roblox or, or whatever, how do you crack that? You know, how do you, you know, what do you, what do you do? So, you know, you kind of have to make it part of a service. So people, because like, if you bought this, if you bought Pac- Pac-Man Mega Dun- Tunnel Battle Chomp Champs, and you bought it on steam, you would probably refund it in the first two hours. Cause you'd be like, none of these are humans. What the fuck am I doing? Like, this is stupid. Why would I, you know, even if you love the game, you're still probably feeling like, well, I, I can't, I can't actually play it because no one is playing it. That was the problem with a game like on rush, which was awesome. Not the greatest game in the world, but on rush was super fun. Uh, when humans were playing it, that was a good, fun multiplayer game, but because it was off center for the types of first and third person shooters that everyone just plays now, it was never going to have legs. It was never going to have a, a lasting player base. And so, of course, it got shut down and of course it got taken offline. And of course, the studio, you know, like, and that's sad. That to me is like, that's probably like if, if I were if I were in charge of some portion of the game pass portfolio or the game pass product, I guess actually, because it's not necessarily about the games itself themselves. I think that's a nut to crack is like, how do we build community around these games that are never going to get a lasting community of their own? Even if we do it temporarily as like a game of the month type thing, how do we incentivize people to all rally around one game so that there's a persistent player base around it during that time frame, so that people fail that they can, you know, so that people feel that they can, whether it's getting their money's worth out of a game that they bought or whatever, like that they feel like they, hey, they, you know, they had a, t- a good time with this game and then were able to move on to the next one or something like that. I think like a multiplayer game of the month or, or, or some way to incentivize people playing those games, I think would be a really interesting direction um, for game pass to try to take on somehow. Um, but game pass has such a variety of games, some of which include multiplayer games. And, you know, if you're playing those games on Xbox, you, you might already have a friend group where you're just playing Warzone all the time or something, you know, there's, you know, it's a, it's a really hard nut to crack. Nintendo kind of has their own lane for that because, the multiplayer situation on the switch is very different. I mean, sure. Fortnite exists. Like some of that stuff does still exist, but you don't have call of duty getting in your way. You just have fewer online games in general, getting in your way. And you have different types of players on that platform that might be a little more open to some of those other things. Um, so I just, you know, that, that to me is one of the crazy things when we talk about live service games or just multiplayer games in general, like the, the high hill that those games have to climb to succeed, you know, think about something like Rumbleverse, you know, Rumbleverse is cool. It, it, it stood out in, in, in its space. It was doing things that other battle Royale games didn't do. It should have had an opportunity to catch on. I think if it had a little more time and had some tweaks, it, it you know it very well could have caught on more than it did. But would it have ever caught on in a way that, um, you know, is Rumbleverse ever going to get Fortnite big? Probably not. But does it have to? Maybe it does. Maybe those games have to get that big, and it's just sink or swim, and there's no middle ground. I don't. I don't really know. I guess it depends, you know, there's, uh, what is it? Uh, Naraka blade point was like, seemed like a, seemed like it mattered for a little while there. And so I wonder, you know, they, they probably have established a player base that probably keeps coming back. Even if it's not massive, it's probably enough to catch a, 
catch a, a match whenever you need it because it, it did it did get a fan base. Um, maybe that's the difference because that that's melee focused largely. You know, at least my memory of it. I guess you have a bow and arrow, but well, in Rumbleverse you can throw stuff, so it's got ranged attacks too. But um, yeah, I don't know. It's a complicated business. Uh, but that, that feast or famine mentality for a lot of this stuff, I think is, is really, um, makes it even trickier. Right. Um, uh, now I'm just thinking about rumble verse. I get, I still get like a hand, like it's, it's like one YouTube comment every month or so on the episode of the podcast where one David Lang was a guest and we, we talked about Rumbleverse a little bit. Like one person comments on that video. I don't think it's the same person. It might be, but it's like, you know, it's one person going, bring back Rumbleverse. When are you bringing back Rumbleverse? And I'll, I'll get like, I, I don't know why I, you know, well, I, I guess I do kind of know why, but uh, I became some kind of surrogate for that type of feedback. But uh, I will get people, there's been a couple of people on Instagram that have sent me private messages about Rumbleverse, uh, about if I've heard anything about Rumbleverse coming back and, and, and all of that. And, um, the answer is no, I, I have not. Um, uh, but I, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, I think that game is cool and I wish it was still around and, uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I wish it had, I don't know. I, I wish it had the ability to make characters that looked like real wrestlers. I, I wish the art style in that game was just different enough. I wish I could make a legitimate looking passable Kenny Omega in that game, both visually and in terms of move set or whatever. Um, as opposed to now I've got a chicken head and now I'm an astronaut and that's that sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's, it, it, that's a hell of a game. I miss it. I miss it. I still had it in fall. Uh, I still had it installed, uh, on both. I think it might still be on my PlayStation five. I, I, I think I uninstalled the Xbox version cause I went through and, and blew away a ton of installed Xbox games not that long ago, but, uh, yeah. Yeah. That's video games though. I don't know. Uh, I'm spending a lot of my other time. I, I'm, I'm still trying to wrap up. I'm dude. It, it's yeah. <laughs> Today is my daughter's last day of preschool. Uh, she went through graduation and stuff yesterday and, um, and today is her last day. And, uh, so she's where my wife has signed her up for a bunch of summer classes and camps and dancing and all this other stuff. And, um, and so that, that's been very exciting. That's been happening around these parts and I'm trying to, uh, book the rest of my appointments for summer games fest. I've, I've got, I feel like I have the key appointments booked. There's a handful more that I need to kind of line up and a bunch of emails I need to send still. But, but, uh, most of that is, most of that is, uh, stuff I need to do. So I, I but yeah, it's, there's been a lot going on. I have, I have been, I don't mind telling you, I've been very tired lately. <laughs> um, yeah, with the, the kids getting sick again a couple weeks ago and just, uh, a lot of the, the stuff that's been kind of happening around the edges of, uh, life here. Uh, it's been equal parts, awesome and intense, um, lately, but, uh, we're, we're doing our best and getting through it and all that stuff. But, uh, yeah. Uh, I don't think, you know, I was originally thinking like, like naturally be like, Oh, I'll, I'll, uh, you know, stream some, 
um, what you call it, uh, Hellblade. But I, I don't, I don't think I'm going to. I, I just don't. I, I think I'm going to uninstall that and kind of, kind of move on. I, I said, I said what I needed to say on the podcast, and I don't think that I, you know, like if you want to see what that game looks like, there's plenty of places to go do that. Um, and uh, yeah. I'm just, uh, you know, like I, I got to go in, in, you know, five or 10 minutes here. I just was not, maybe not enough time to play another game. So I just figured I'd hang out a little bit. I don't know, but, uh, it's been, you know, the, the podcast has been doing well lately. It's, uh, I mean, it, it's, it's kind of always been doing well. Like it, it always fluctuates little bits and pieces, but it seems like it's on an upward tick lately numbers wise, which has been interesting. Um, I don't know what's the, if it's just been a few weeks of like really heavy Xbox news that's driven that or, or is it the thumbnails I changed? I don't really know. I don't, I can't be that. I, it, it, it's not up enough to where it's like, oh, this is bigger. Like the, like there are sort of natural waves uh, that that thing goes through that any, any podcast goes through, I think numbers wise where it'll just, it'll fluctuate 10% up, 10% down, you know, just kind of week to week, depending on, depending on who the hell knows. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. seems like more people are downloading that audio. More people are watching that YouTube video, uh, when it goes up every week. And that's been, that's been interesting. Um, and uh, I, I need to sign some paperwork around the podcast here over the next couple of days here. I should have, I should have done that uh, last night, but instead I went to sleep. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, that's, that's been interesting. Um, and I don't know. I don't know. Just kind of been doing my thing. Uh, and I want to expand that thing, but there's, there's a lot, uh, like I said. A lot, a lot of, a lot of life, a lot of life happening, uh, right now, uh, alongside all this other, everyone, everyone here in the household is doing great. Um, everyone here in, in the confines of this building are doing outstanding, but there's some other stuff, uh, happening that's less good, let's say, um, that's kind of been, um, Intense, I guess I would say, but, uh, yeah, yeah, man. Um, what is even out? Is, is there other stuff out soon? Like I, I, I feel like I don't have quite the same grasp on new releases that I used to because they just seem so spread out and strange now. Um, I know they announced that was like Dragon Ball sparking, is uh you know out in like October or something like that, but there's not. Oh yeah, Paper Mario is this week. Okay, I should email Nintendo. I haven't I haven't talked to anyone at Nintendo in a very long time. <laughs> um, I should see about that. I I would I would be interested in playing some Paper Mario. I suppose. Um, but yeah, I've kind of just been like that. That stuff's all two weeks away. And and that's, I don't know, like it feels like that's when a lot of this stuff will come to a head on this Xbox stuff. Or that'll be like the next like gut check. Hey, how do you feel about Xbox that everyone seems to be going through these days? Um, it's weird because it feels like they're at a point where like the way I feel about it right now, I don't know that there's anything they can say about upcoming games that uh, feels like it matters. Because they've announced a lot of stuff that hasn't shipped or there's just a lot of things out there that they're, you know, that they have not given great detail on when it will come out or, you know, like, like games that have seemingly had trouble development, like a perfect dark or like a fable or, or, or whatever that, um, that feels weird. And I, yeah, like I, I'm, I'm trying to imagine like, what would they say about a game that would get people excited about Xbox as a concept? What could, what could they get on stage and say, um, that would uh get people pumped about xbox i i don't i don't know 
you know, there's there's more game. There's they could show more of the games that they have announced, and I think there'll be some people that are excited about that. But like, there's just kind of a weird. They have spent a long time talking, and then have not backed up the talk with games, and the games that have come out have felt a little off the mark, and it's just it's fascinating to follow. Like I, you know, I, I keep talking about it because it's like it just seems so fucking insane to me that it's gotten to this point, you know? And I'm sure there are a lot of like uh, good reasons or excuses or whatever that some of the stuff's happening. Like sometimes projects go sideways and you know, maybe this, this, there's a lot of snake bit shit there that is not going well for them across multiple teams and disciplines and whatever. But like, man, man, oh man. Um, it's, that's been really, it's, it's just interesting to watch if nothing else. Uh, so yeah, I think that's why it's been such a, a dominant topic of conversation. Um, and, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see. I, I don't, I don't know, you know, I don't know what they, what they do from here. It's, it's, it's in, you know, cause you look at all the other stuff happening around the company with, the big push for these AI laptops and everything else. And, you know, you start to try, you, you, you want to try to draw threads between these announcements and try to go like, is the next Xbox going to be like this? And you're like, well, maybe hopefully not because that doesn't seem that interesting. You know, like, oh, they sure do seem talking like to talk about the handheld PC market. Would they make one of their own? Like, yeah, probably. Um, but what is, you know, does that matter? There's been talk going around saying that like Sony's got a handheld that'll play fucking PlayStation 4 games. Like, ah, maybe. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that, just like conceptually. Again, I, I think the the appeal or or like a for me, a big part of the appeal of the Steam Deck and some of these other devices is that you have full access to them. You can do shit to them. So for much the same reason that PSVR 2 is you know, kind of a non-starter. I think a closed platform handheld that, or if they're, if they're thinking that a closed platform handheld would, um, would be the same cool thing that a Steam Deck is, I I don't think so. Not without a bunch of custom like like separate games. If it's a thing that runs separate games of their own and they just try to make their own handheld, then you're like, oh, maybe. Unfortunately, Sony just shut down a bunch of the studios that you would want to make games for something like that. Um, so, I, you know, like, what's the fucking point? Like, I think there, there are a lot of PlayStation 5 owners that are thinking, man, it would be cool to have more games. Maybe the point is, hey, if we put out a thing that runs games at around a PS4 level of quality or a lower level of quality, we can make more of them because they're less expensive to make. Maybe that's the way that they make their inroad so like, hey, all this push to 4K really fucked everybody over, huh? Anyway, we got this handheld here. It runs games at 1080p. If you dock it, it'll upscale them. But, I, you know, hey. Maybe it's a way for them to backdoor their way into making smaller games again. I don't know. But again, I think they shut down a lot of the teams that would be some of their best assets in making games like that. So, I, you know, that's sort of a weird sort of a, a, a weird time for Sony to do something like that. But I, I don't know. Some, some of the rumor around that was like, oh, this is going to come out around the time of the PS6. And so it'll be a handheld PS5 slash PS4. And you're like, okay, I can't. Like at this point, I can't do anything with this talk. <laughs> this is too, like, that's that's too uh, ethereal to really latch onto and, and, and really speculate about much beyond, you know, what I, what I just did, I guess. But, um... Yeah, I don't know. I, the the idea like and and if if Xbox I think think similarly if they were to say, "Hey, here's our uh handheld Xbox. It's the same closed platform Xbox software we've had all along." Like, you know. Uh I I would much rather buy something that's running Steam OS and um and that I can play around with, you know. And some people don't want that. I'm sure they're pl most I bet most people that bought a Steam Deck never do anything strange with it. Um, so maybe that's just a situation where I'm a quote unquote power user. And so my needs are a little different than the average consumer or whatever, but, um, 
but yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It's an interesting business and it just gets stranger all the time. I think that's what keeps me coming back. I hope you keep coming back here for this. I'll be back on Friday to rank some 8-bit Nintendo games. We've got to keep building that list. Uh, so come on back on Friday and we'll, uh, we'll get that going. 10 a.m. Pacific time. Um, the Patreon's over at patreon.com slash Jeff Gerstman. Sign on up. Make it happen. Get into it, baby. I don't know. I don't know. Um, anyway, I've been the best player. Take care of yourselves. I'm going to go buy a bunch of Combat Master skins. And I'll uh, see you later. <laughs>